Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. As you are all aware, distinguished members of this forum, one of the long-standing difficulties affecting our region is the long-running insurgency that has disrupted our way of life and become a barrier to our developmental efforts. I do, however, appreciate Mr. President Mohammed Buaru's renewed energy in confronting the Boko Haram trade, banditry, kidnapping for ransom, and other criminal activities head on. And add the more is needed to be done to overcome the security challenges once for all in the whole country. I'm happy to add that my colleague from Borno has affirmed that there has been a renewed reduction in the insurgency in Borno, and we're happy to mention that. Due to the persistent, due to the persistent Boko Haram issue, we have lost a lot, a large section of our population. Many people have lost their loved ones and their livelihoods have been devastated. The threat will remain intractable as long as the insurgency sources of funding, supplies, and recruitment are not cut off. Permit me to, however, salute the Nigerian military sacrifice, heroism, and professionalism, not just in the fight against insurgents, but also in defending the country's sovereignty and unity. I must acknowledge that the military, the police, and all other security organizations have played and continue to play an important role in maintaining peace and security in troubled areas of the state and other states. We will not fail to provide them with the required assistance and cooperation in this difficult undertaking. The displacement of people from their ancestral homes has resulted in the serious refugee crisis, which is one of the consequences of the insurgency. Taraba has had to shoulder the burden of their flight. With thousands of them fleeing their villages and towns in search of safe home in the state, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and its Taraba state counterpart, SEMA, as well as the local and international NGOs, have done a lot to alleviate their suffering. But the problem remains tremendous, and much more has to be done. Similarly, the Haras farmers conflict has resulted in a high number of internally displaced persons, IDPs, mainly in Taraba state, given our favorable climate, the ugly problem has had a severe influence on agricultural output, as evidenced by the country's high food prices. Insurgency, crime, and the persistent harder farmer conflicts, no doubt, have impacted negatively on the country's youth unemployment and high crime rates. The Northeast region is one of the agricultural belt of the country. We need to figure out which crops grow in each of our states and where we have a com comparative advantage over other competitors. In Taraba State, the government has promoted the cultivation of grains such as maize, guinea corn, and rice, as well as root crops like yam, cassava, and potato. We are also leading producers of seed, soya beans, avocado, pears, citrus fruit, among others. To increase the productivity of our farmers, this forum was key into federal government agricultural intervention programs and also encourage farmers to form cooperatives to access low interest loan facilities and other incentives. This brings to mind 
the Great Green Wall, GGW, which claims and aims to slow the spread of Sahara Desert. The initiative should stimulate the planting of economic trees that will provide food for the people and also serve as fodder for the animals. Desert encroachment, unfortunately, has forced many people to migrate from the Sahel region to other parts of the country. Therefore, this African Union program should be re-energized re re with the support of this meeting. On regional cooperation, the chairman, board of directors of the Northeast region, Shuttle Airlines, has been invited to make a presentation to the meeting on the, its progress, challenges facing the company, and the journey so far. Respected and admired colleagues, I am delighted that oil has been discovered in the Northeast notably in the Bauchi Gombe axis and in Taraba State, but has bought oil and gas. In the same line, I urge the federal government to expand exp and expedite the exploration in the Charge Basin, as well as the Benue Trough, which according to geological reports, is rich in oil and gas. As a result of the 13% derivation principle enjoyed by all producing states, we anticipate that the earlier exploitation of these petroleum resources in the Northeast region will increase our revenue profile and join us to the club of the 13 percenters. Similarly, the Northeast states are rich in solid minerals that are yet to be exploited. Solid minerals has a stable price on the international market, unlike crude oil, and can help enhance and diversify the country's economy. Our August visitors, in enhancing the oil and gas as well as solid mineral resources in our region for increased revenue, we must avoid the mistakes of environmental contamination, like in the Niger Delta and the lead poisoning in Zamfara State by ensuring rigorous environmental impact assessment study before mining activities commence. On this basis, I urge the federal government to work with the state governments to develop our mineral resources, which are on the exclusive list. Even though the land use adverse land matters in the state to increase the income and revenue we must devise a way so that it is a win-win situation for both the federal government and the state governments. In this regard, I wish to recommend to the forum to push for the removal of the exploration and exploitation of mineral resources, if possible, from the exclusive lift. For instance, control over mining is deregulated by the central government to regional authorities in South Africa, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, Colombia, Chile, Canada, Australia, just to mention but a few. The South African Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Act of, 20, of 2002 is a good example of how this could be resolved for the benefit of the central and regional governments. Dear colleagues, the federal government's road for tax plans which give select corporations like Dangote and Boer groups relief on backlog of unpaid taxes in exchange for road developments is a praiseworthy action, though some of us have no idea of the criteria used to choose which roads to construct. Therefore, we are calling on the Dangote Group and Co. to consider the construction of selected roads in Adama and Taraba states, which it has huge investments. Similarly, the Taraba state government had earlier made submissions to the Northeast Development Commission on the construction and rehabilitation of, of some roads. For example, Mararaba Baisa Abong, Lao Karim Lamido, and Jalingo Zingmao Belo to Ungoroji. 
I wish to request the Commission to commence work on these said roads. Finally, I respectfully request that this distinguished forum debate the topics on the agenda objectively and come out with a constructive and helpful solutions to problems that impact not only on our region, but the entire country. Once again, I extend the most sincere greetings of our good people of Taraba State and wish you all a memorable stay in a lovely state. Thank you. And God bless. <laughs>
who was part of the command's operation in the war against insurgency in the Northeast and is now on top of the situation as indicated by the relative peace gain so far. I wish to draw our attention once again to our last meeting where we resolved to urge our military for the involvement of our respective communities in the fight against insecurity. The involvement of the communities will facilitate better understanding, cooperation, and provision of local intelligence for the success of the security operations. Our military should capitalize on the conflict and division within the ranks of the insurgents and intensify the war against them with a view to ensuring their defeat. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in our previous meetings, we identified insufficient power supply as impediment for the development of the Northeast. The deficit in supply of electricity to the sub-region must be addressed through actualizing the Mambila hydropower project. We are equally calling for the maintenance of the existing electricity transmission lines that cut across the entire sub-region. This will further prevent destruction of electricity infrastructure by the insurgents. The destruction of transmission lines has in the recent past brought about total power outage in Maiduguri, Borno State for the last six months. To improve quality of education, as a result of setback experience in the sub-region in the last 10 years, we resolved to initiate the Northeast Council on Education to improve students' performance and admission into higher institutions in line with our quest for bridging gaps in the education sector. There is a need for the forum to expedite action on the issue and set machineries in motion for the Council to commence work immediately. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I once again remind the forum to vigorously pursue bilateral interface with neighboring countries and the British High Commission to work out modalities on working closely with governments of these countries in all areas of importance to the sub-region as initiated in our previous meetings. This will go a long way in fast-tracking development in the sub-region. Finally, I urge my colleagues to intensify the intervention in the agricultural sector through the provision of vital inputs and implements towards boosting food security in the sub-region and the country at large. There are therefore the need to open up more farmlands for cultivation for our team in farmers. We should synergize with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps for the provision of security personnel within farmlands where necessary. I wish the forum excesses, a successful deliberation and a happy stay in Jalingo. Thank you.